Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will talk more about operation practices. At some point, you will need to decide what transceiver to purchase. While I don't recommend putting the cart before the horse and buying one before you get your license, I encourage you to look at some of the different brands and compare their features. Brands like Icon, Kenwood, and Yaesu have been around for many years. There are now many Chinese companies that sell them in the United States for much less. I will just say that you get what you pay for as a general rule. I will not tell you which brands to buy. It's a matter of choice and preference. I will say that personally, I don't enjoy sending my hard earned dollars to countries that seek to do us harm when I can avoid doing so. It is easy to search the web for what country each brand was manufactured in. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is lesson four, part two of my amateur radio technician class license course covering the 2022 to the 2026 question pool. I'm Gary Stevens, your instructor. My call sign is Kilo Echo Tube Golf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license. I've been an amateur operator since 2001, amateur extra since 2014, I have been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years now. The T4 section covers amateur radio practices. On your exam, they will select two questions at random from this sub-element. There are two groups, totaling 24 questions. In this video, we will talk about T4B. It covers operating controls, frequency tuning, use of filters, squelch function, AGC or automatic gain control, memory channels, noise blanker, microphone gain, receiver incremental tuning or RIT, bandwidth selection, digital transceiver configuration. We should know that excessive microphone gain on single sideband or SSB transmission can create distorted transmitted audio. This slide shows a waveform of increasing amplitude. Once it exceeds the maximum amplitude of the amplifier, it will clip the waveform. This clipping causes the audio to sound distorted because part of the wave is now missing. The question on the exam is, what is the effect of excessive microphone gain on single sideband transmissions? A, frequency instability. B, distorted transmitted audio. C, increased SWR or D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer is B, distorted transmitted audio. The keypad or VFO knob can be used to enter a transceiver's operating frequency. As a general rule, we find keypads on microphones with mobile rigs and the device itself for handhelds. On mobile and base stations, there is usually a VFO knob as well. They're almost always the largest knob on the unit. The question you might see on the exam is, which of the following can be used to enter a transceiver's operating frequency? A, the keypad or VFO knob. B, the CTCSS or DTMF encoder. C, the automatic frequency control. Or D, all these choices are correct. The answer of course is A, the keypad or VFO knob. We should know a weak FM signal can be heard when we set the squelch threshold so that the receiver output audio is on all the time. In this slide, we will see the squelch control knob on my Kenwood TS50. Turning the knob counter clockwise will lower the threshold, allowing us to hear a weak FM signal. Here's a squelch control demo from lesson two, part two as a refresher. Our test question might look something like this. How is squelch adjusted so that a weak FM signal can be heard? A, set the squelch threshold so that the receiver output audio is on all the time. B, turn up the audio level until it overcomes the squelch threshold. C, turn on the anti-squelch function. D, enable squelch enhancement. Did you get this one correct? You should have picked A, set the squelch threshold so that the receiver output audio is on all the time. 
We should know that the way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency or channel on your transceiver is to store it in a memory channel. Each amateur rig has its own method for storing a frequency or channel into memory. On my FT991A, all that is required is to set the frequency, the offset, and any tones required on VFOA, and then press A-M, which means analog to memory. The question that might be on your exam is, what is the way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency or channel on your transceiver? A, enable the frequency offset. B, store it in a memory channel. C, enable the Vox. Or D, use the scan mode to select the desired frequency. The answer being B, store it in a memory channel. Understand that the scanning function of an FM transceiver tunes through a range of frequencies to check for activity. This works most like the scan feature on a vehicle radio. When activated, it can scan a frequency range or through what you have stored in memory. This slide shows the scan button on my TS-50. On some rigs, there is a button on the microphone that can activate it as well. Our test question reads, what does the scanning function on an FM transceiver do? A, checks incoming signal deviation. B, prevents interference to nearby repeaters. C, tunes through a range of frequencies to check for activity. Or D, checks for messages left on a digital bulletin board. Did you get this one? The correct answer is C, tunes through a range of frequencies to check for activity. We need to know that the RIT or clarifier control could be used if the voice pitch of a single sideband signal returning to your CQ call seems to be too high or low. As you can see in this slide on the Kenwood, it's called a RIT, which stands for receiver incremental tuning. On a Yezu, it is called clarifier. The terms are synonymous. Think of it as a fine tuning knob for the VFO. In the exam, you could see this question. Which of the following controls could be used if the voice pitch of the single sideband signal returning to your CQ call seems too high or low? A, the AGC or limiter. B, the bandwidth selection. C, the tone squelch. Or D, the RIT or clarifier. The answer is D, the RIT or clarifier. We need to know that a DMR code plug contains information for repeaters and talk groups. A code plug is nothing more than a software file that gets loaded into your DMR transceiver. Thankfully for most of us, there are programs that convert the information from text to code that the DMR transceiver can understand. You could get this question on your exam. What does a DMR code plug contain? A, your call sign and CW for automatic identification. B, access information for repeaters and talk groups. C, the codec for digitizing audio. Or D, the DMR software version. The correct answer is B, access information for repeaters and talk groups. We need to know that the advantage of having multiple receiver bandwidth choices on a multi-mode transceiver is that it permits noise and interference reductions by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. This slide shows the bandwidth choices on my Kenwood TS-570D. Lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, frequency shift keying, FM and AM are the choices of this one. We will talk more about the bandwidth of each of these in another lesson. Your examiner may grace you with this question. What is the advantage of having multiple receiver bandwidth choices on a multi-mode transceiver? A, permits monitoring of several modes at once by selecting a separate filter for each mode. B, permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. C, increases the number of frequencies that can be stored in memory. Or D, increases the amount of offset between received and transmitted frequencies. The correct answer you should select is B, permits noise interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. You should be aware that a specific group of stations is selected on a digital voice transceiver by entering the group's identification code. 
I don't have a DMR yet. In this model, the user information suggests there's a manual dial to select the group or private ID. The exam question is this, how is a specific group of stations selected on a digital voice transceiver? A, by retrieving a frequency from the transceiver memory. B, by enabling the group's CTCSS tone. C, by entering the group's identification code. Or D, by activating automatic identification. The correct answer is C, by entering the group's identification code. Be aware that a 2400 Hertz receiver filter bandwidth provides the best signal to noise ratio for single sideband reception. This slide shows an aftermarket bandwidth filter for 2400 Hertz. These filters are mainly found in HF rigs. On the exam, you might see this question. Which of the following receiver filter bandwidths provides the best signal to noise ratio for single sideband reception? A, 500 Hertz, B, 1000 Hertz, C, 2400 Hertz, or D, 5000 Hertz? Of course, the correct answer is C, 2400 Hertz. Know that your call sign must be programmed into the D-Star digital transceiver before transmitting. D-Star started out as an ICOM product. Because of its nature, the ID is sent automatically from a stored value. The question you might see is, which of the following must be programmed into a D-Star digital transceiver before transmitting? A, your call sign. B, your output power. C, the codec type being used. D, all these choices are correct. And the correct answer is A, your call sign. We should know that the distortion of the signal's audio is a result from tuning an FM transceiver above or below a signal's frequency. In this video, I move the clarifier to change the frequency slightly to illustrate distortion above and below the signal's frequency. The exam question is, what is the result of tuning an FM receiver above or below the signal's frequency? A, change in audio pitch. B, sideband inversion. C, generalization of the heterodyne tone. Or D, distortion of the signal's audio. The correct answer is D, distortion of the signal's audio. This is the end of lesson four, part two. How are you doing so far? Are you able to follow along uh, with confidence? I know for a few, uh, this material might seem like rocket science. If you're having trouble with the lesson, watch it again. And in a day or so, it'll eventually click. Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, when you reach the end of the rope, tie a knot and then hang on. Be sure to like this video if it was helpful and subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning.